uh, because we've had an incident here in Collierville that uh, has been occurring all over the country. Um, today at uh, 1.30 hours or 1.30 p.m., uh, our dispatch received a call of an active shooter occurring at the Kroger behind us. Uh, at 1.34, the first car arrived on the scene. Immediately, uh, our cars began to flood the area uh, to secure the scene. As we entered the building, there were multiple people shot. The, uh, our SWAT team, along with patrol officers and our command staff members, began the process of going aisle to aisle, room to room, uh, clearing, bringing uh, employees out that were in hiding, and helping the victims that were that were injured. Um, at this time, we have still have a couple of active scenes that we are working. The suspected shooter's vehicle uh, is in the parking lot and we are waiting on some additional equipment to get here to be able to uh, safely check that vehicle as well as some uh, property that's on him. Um, at this time, uh, the shooter uh, is deceased. Uh, we believe that's going to be from a uh, self-inflicted gunshot wound. We have 13 victims. Our hearts go out to those that were injured. Uh, we do have one fatality, uh, and our thoughts and prayers are with those family members. Um, we had, uh, like I said, we had 13 victims that, that we know of at this time. Now, please bear with me and know that this situation uh, is probably going to change, and we'll do another update, another briefing, probably in three hours, somewhere in that range, and we'll update you. But we're having, we know that we've had uh, 12 victims that were transported from this scene, and we also know that we've had um, one, at least one additional walk up to uh, local hospitals. Uh, today I have uh, Assistant Chief Jeff Ablin with me, our Fire Chief at Carryville, Chief Billings, his Assistant Chief King. Uh, assistant Special Agent in Charge Jeremy Baker with the FBI. We have Colonel Smith with MPD, Chief Inspector uh, Mills, Derek Mills with Shelby County. And I can't say enough about uh, the cooperation and the help. And uh, as bad as this scene is, and it's, hor it's horrific, I've been involved in this for 34 years and I've never seen anything like it. Um, but our teams came together and uh, worked together. That's not just the law enforcement agencies, but the fire. Uh, sometimes there's a delay. There was no delay with, uh, with our firemen coming into that scene with us. We just trained on this back two months ago at Carterville High School. So it is, uh, it's like I said, it's with a broken heart that I have to stand here before you today. Uh, so please keep the families in your prayers. Keep the folks from uh, uh, this Kroger. Uh, we have a representative from Kroger here as well. Um, I'm not sure if they're going to give a statement at this point, but uh, everything is preliminary. So with that, I'll open it up for just a couple of real quick questions. Oh, 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 one at a time. At this point in the investigation, there appears to be one shooter. And the deceased person, was that the shooter or was that the victim? Both. We have, we have one, one victim and then one shooter that's DOA at this point. And so just to clarify, 13 people shot and of those 12 injured and one dead, correct? Right. Not counting the shooting. At this point. Okay. Now remember, we're still receiving information that's coming in from other parts. Even uh, we've got some reports there may have been some walk-ups in Fayette County uh, with Fayette County Ambulance Service. So we're trying to confirm the, that information now. Um, but this, like I said, this was a joint effort. We had, Chief Billings can speak more to the number of ambulances and where they come from, but every city uh, around came and supported uh, the sheriff. Right now, that crime scene is huge, and it's being worked by the FBI's uh, evidence response team. Uh, TBI's got uh, agents in route. The Carryville Police Department Detective Division, or our Criminal um, Investigative Division, is in there, um, and the sheriff's office. So um, it's it's going to take a little bit to know exactly what happened. Chief, was the shooter an employee, or do you know yet? That's part of the ongoing investigation. That's something that we don't need to talk SUV about. Connected to the shooter? It's all still under investigation. Were there any children who were injured in I do not have any information on that at this point. Uh, not to my knowledge, but... Can you give a range of injuries from minor to severe? They're very serious. Very serious injuries. If you could 
Do you have any idea how many people were in the store at the time? I do not, not at this point, but um, we know that we have quite a few witnesses. We're bringing in additional detectives um, for people that were in the store. Um, there were numerous employees that were working. I know we found people hiding in freezers and in locked offices, and uh, you know they were doing what they had been trained to do, run, hide, fight. And so, you know, I hate that we had to do it here. Did you you found inside the store or outside? That's part of the investigation. I don't, I don't want to get into that. Can you give us an idea? Of, can you give us an idea of what kind of weapon he was using? No. Uh, I'm not going to go into that at this point. Let's let's get through the investigation. Remember, we're two hours away from the most horrific event that's occurred in Carville history. That's part of this investigation. Chief, there's an image circulating on social media about a person who is suspected to be the suspect on the top of the building. Can you confirm or deny that? I cannot. I can tell you this. I was part of a team that, that extricated a, an employee of Kroger from the top of the building, so it's more than likely going to be uh, a Kroger employee that was working on the roof. Chief, what's this, just the aftermath of this for this community, these employees you were just mentioning? How does this rank in part of our district right now? I mean, what you're all dealing with right now? I mean, obviously, it's like every other community in the country. It's, it's horrific. We hate that it happened, but... Uh, this is one of the most resilient communities in, in America and uh, one of the best police departments. Uh, I'm very thankful. I, I watched guys that, uh, that, that, that ran into the front of that building um, knowing that uh, historically, not in this case, but it, historically many of these shooters are, have very high powered rifles and not one of them hesitated going in that front door. Chief, we saw you, you meeting with the employees over here and are they, are they okay? How are they responding? I have, I have met with some as we were bringing them out of the building. I have not uh, talked with all of them, so yes ma'am. Okay, I tell you what we're going to do. We'll take one more question and then we're going to, we'll, we'll, uh, we're going to pause this for about three hours. So anybody else? One last question. Yes ma'am. Uh, all the victims are there. No, they're, they're spread out among all the area hospitals. Hey, and because we're getting ready what equipment are you waiting to give me to go in this car? Uh, no, that's that's part of the investigation. So we're going to hold that right now. I don't. What we don't want to do is create unnecessary fear. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate you.